Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over basic procedural animation for the player arms and we're going to be using that for procedural based recoil as well as procedural sway. Now later on we'll probably implement this to make the arms not move through walls as well as make the flashlight track objects of interest but for now we're not going to worry about that we're just going to worry about the right hand and the gun. So let's go ahead and hop into the scene. We're going to be taking it a little bit slower than normal today as I want to go over everything and make sure I don't miss anything. So the way I'm setting this up is I have the IK for the left and right hand when we're idle and if I actually turn on these IK you can see where the left and right hand will sit which is mostly where they are currently and then I also have an aiming left and right hand and the aiming left and right hand is actually meant to mimic this position. Now, as you can see, we've built a lot of new animations. And if we hop over into Blender, you can see we didn't just make new animations. We actually made an entire new rig. We use the game rig tools. I'll have a link to it in the description. It is a wonderful set of tools for converting a rigify skeleton into a more traditional skeleton that can be more easily imported into game engines. I've used it in my previous biped tutorial series. So we went ahead and did that and we rebuilt all of the animations. Down here in the non-linear animation panel, you can see all the v2 animations these are the actual animations we ended up going with in game we also went ahead and made the revolver a child of the hand though we didn't do the same with the flashlight we actually have the flashlight just instantiated in the engine and it doesn't actually have any bones rigged to it the little button to turn it on and off is actually using a blend shape well let's hop back over into Godot and we'll go through all the animations so first we have the low idle and the aiming idle and as you can see they swap between the two and we now have a proper physical flashlight as opposed to just attaching it to the body. We also have reloads for both the aiming and the low reload. This is the primary difference as we need to blend from the animation into the reload and back again smoothly. I couldn't properly do that with just a single reload animation. So in the high reload animation, the flashlight just goes back you know, away from the camera. And then in the low reload animation, you can actually see he turns it off. Now for the animations to work, we couldn't get everything done in Blender. And a lot of those are in reference to the bullet shells as well as the flashlight itself being turned on and off and also having a blend shape right here for the switch. If we step through the animation real quick, you can see we have all of the bullets here and they disappear as he dumps them out. Each one is placed back in and remember the bone that the bullet is attached to is the same bone that the flashlight is attached to. So we hide that flashlight and make the bullet visible and you place all the bullets into the chambers and then we get that flashlight back out and you can see he turns it back on. And that's pretty much it. It's not exactly a complicated set of animations, but I did want to go over it because with them set the way they are, it's important to note that all of the fine movements in the animations are handled by traditional animations, and then they are blended back into IK for the idle animations. So the idle right here is just a completely blank pose. It doesn't actually move around because all the movement's going to be handled inside of the procedural animation. And to facilitate that, you can also see we've got went ahead and added the skeleton IK 3Ds right here for the left and right hand. Now, there's one last thing before we hop into the weapon effects controller. I did modify the player body controller slightly to handle the low and aiming reload. And you can see that right here. Instead of just traveling to an animation for the reloading animation, we actually have a reload function, which switches between the different animations depending on whether it's aiming or not, and then resets that aiming boolean. And all of that's necessary for this animation tree to function like it looks. So let's go ahead and turn on that animation tree, go back to idle. We can save that, and we can go ahead and hop into the weapon effects controller and get started. So before before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple export categories. And I'm going to go ahead and add the spread noise variable here. If we select the weapon effects controller, you can see how the category is broken apart. You can see that that's where the spread noise is. This is very handy when we get into more complex script structures like this. Now we are going to add a bunch of variables, so I'm going to kind of move through them fairly quickly. Here we have all of the spread variables. So we have spread panning speed, and that's how fast we pan through that spread noise. And then we have spread aiming cone size, spread idle cone size as well as spread bloom per shot and spread bloom decay. So basically the way this works is the spread noise is going to be a basic fast noise light, which just looks like this. And we're going to iterate through this in order to offset the gun in a smooth, believable fashion. The panning speed is how fast we iterate through that. And then the bloom per shot is how much we're adding to that cone in order to make it more inaccurate when you fired a whole bunch of shots very rapidly. And then of course the spread bloom decay is how quickly we go back to our baseline. 
the different cone sizes are actually in degrees and then they will be converted to radians for the math calculations and those are degrees off of the center of the screen that the gun will actually be firing now besides that we do want two variables that are within ranges and that's going to be the horizontal bias and the rotation bias now the rotation bias is a little bit more complicated but the horizontal bias is just how far to the left or right we're going to make the recoil kick up and that's positive to the right negative to the left i pull it a little bit to the left just because it feels a little bit better it feels a little bit more realistic but you can set this to whatever you like now the recoil rotation bias is how much it rotates the revolver versus how much it actually kicks the revolver physically upwards when you fire so if you set this to a higher value you actually end up with a slightly more professional feeling like someone who really knows what they're doing because it feels more like it's always aimed down sights perfectly if you set this to a lower value the gun just sits in place and kicks upwards and it doesn't look very good so 0.85 is what I ended up going with. Now we need all the variables for recoil. So we have recoil size. That's how much we kick upwards. Recoil panning speed is just like spread panning speed. It's just going to be how fast the recoil noise is going to be sampled through. So we tend to want a little bit of a higher recoil panning speed because the recoil will not be visible as long. And if we want the gun to sway anything to one side or the other, we do want a fairly high recoil panning speed. Recoil fade is how fast we come back to center. I found if you set this too low, you end up shooting into the ceiling a whole bunch. So I set this around 20 i may actually set it higher later recoil actual blend speed is how fast we linear interpolate towards that target position and this is just so that we smooth out all the movements now besides that we do want to go ahead and get our ik solvers so we're going to have right and left ik solvers and this is just going to be skeleton ik 3d like we've done in the past then we are going to have a reference to the camera node, and this is actually going to be supplied in the player body. This is going to be used to actually determine what is forward. We also want a reference to all of our containers. So this will be the left IK marker idle container, right IK, and the aiming IK containers. And finally, we need the aiming and idle actual IK targets for both of the hands. Now in the private variables, we're going to go ahead and add an is aiming variable, and this is just going to be used to determine which IK we're actually targeting. Then we're also going to have a current recoil target and a current recoil actual variable. And this is going to be used to kick up the recoil and also keep track of it over time so that we can fade it back to normal realistically. And speaking of time, we're going to go ahead and add in a variable for the current recoil time. So that's how much time we have remaining. And then we also have current spread additive and current spread time. So the current spread additive is a little bit different. That's the bloom. So the, so the cone of fire out of the revolver will expand if the player is involved in stressful events or fires his weapon a whole bunch and that's in addition to the recoil so it's not just the recoil and then we also want three variables that are going to be the vector threes of the base positions of all the different ik containers these are just going to be used to make sure we don't stray too far from their base positions we're also going to go ahead and assign those right here we can just use the position variable and then we also want to go ahead and start our ik solvers now down below the ready function we're going to be adding a process function and first off, we're gonna go ahead and iterate through our recoil and our spread timers. These are going to be used to sample the noise for both of the different movements. And we're going to just take the current recoil time and we're gonna to add to it delta multiplied by their various panning speeds. And we're wrapping this around this number so that we don't ever go out of range for what a float variable is actually capable of containing. Now we're gonna do something similar with the current spread additive and current recoil target, except we're going to be subtracting from them always and we're going to clamp that to zero so that that way they will be subtracted from until they reach zero. As we do want the spread and the recoil to both go back to their baselines. Then for the current recoil actual, we're just going to lerp between the current recoil actual and the current recoil target by the recoil actual blend speed multiplied by delta. And this is just going to smooth out any inconsistencies and make sure that if when you fire, it doesn't just teleport the gun upwards. Now for the actual offset, we're going to go ahead and create a new variable, which we're going to call just recoil, and it'll be of type vector three. And inside of this, we're first off going to create a new vector three with the X being sampled from the spread noise using the get noise one D function. And we're we're going to be passing in that current recoil time. We're also going to go ahead and take the X and multiply it by 0.5 and add one to it. What this is going to do is remap it from negative one to one over to zero to one. And this is going to make sure that we're always kicking upwards and we're never kicking downwards. And then on the Y axis, that's to the left and right, we're gonna go ahead and get the noise again, but we're gonna use the current recoil time plus 1000. That just makes sure that it won't be the same result as this one. And then we're gonna subtract from that the recoil horizontal bias. So that that way, if we make the recoil horizontal bias positive, it'll be over to the right and vice versa with the negative. And then we're just gonna multiply that by the current recoil actual converted to radians from degrees. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and create an if statement. We're going to say if we're aiming, and if we're not, we're also going to have an else statement. So first off, 
if we're aiming, we're going to create a new variable called spread, and it'll be of type vector3. And this one's going to be somewhat similar to the recoil. And it's just going to create a new vector3 with noise based off the current spread time for the x and y with 0 in the z. That way it doesn't rotate left and right. And once again, we're adding to the current spread time to make sure we don't get the exact same variable for y as we do for x. And then we're multiplying that by the radians of the spread aiming cone size and adding to it the current spread added. So that's going to be spreading it out or shrinking it depending on whether that additive is very high at the moment. Now the way we actually factor in these variables is we just take the aiming IK container dot rotation and we're going to equal it to the recoil plus the spread. Now we can do this because we actually don't ever turn around backwards. If we ever rotated more than 360 degrees we would run into serious issues with gimbal locking but because we're not ever going to do that we don't have any problem with just setting the rotation and that's in Euler angle so that's radians. Now the global position we're going to do something a little bit different. So first off we're going to take the current aiming target base position. We're going to make that a global variable and then we're going to linear interpolate between that and the global position of the camera plus the forward vector of the gun hand normalized and multiplied by the distance between the base position and the camera. And what this is going to do is linear interpolate between where the camera is and where you are aiming so that that way the pistol is raised up to be in between the two locations. And we're going to linear interpolate this based off the recoil rotation bias. This way, if you're kicked way up into the air and the recoil rotation bias is low, then it'll be mostly where its original position was. But if the recoil rotation bias is high, then it'll be up in between where you're actually aiming and where the camera is. Now for the else statement, we're going to do something similar. The only real difference in the first two lines is instead of using the spread aiming cone size, we're using the spread idle cone size. But for the global position, we can't just place it in between the camera and the target point because it's not actually up in front of the face. It's down into the right. So what we do is we use the base position for the beginning of the lerp like we did in the past. But instead of just using the camera position, we're actually going to take the right hand base idle position and we're going to use it but without the Z axis. So that's the forward and backwards axis. So that means if the gun's down into the right and in front of the player, then the position that we've just created is down into the right, but not in front of the player. And we're going to use that as kind of a pseudo elbow. And we're going to add to it the forward vector of the gun, once again, multiplied by the right hand idle base position dot length. And so what this is going to do is just make sure that the gun is moving up and down as the gun pans around, depending on that recoil rotation bias. We may actually need to make this a new variable at some point in the future, but for now, we can use the same one for both. And that'll be pretty much it for the process function. Now, down here in the fire revolver function, we do need to go ahead and add in that recoil. So we just set our current recoil target plus equals the recoil size. So that's going to add to the recoil. And then we also add to the current spread additive with the spread bloom per shot. Now for the set aiming and set idle node, we're just going to go ahead and set the target nodes for each of the IK solvers to their respective aiming and idle IK targets. The only thing of real note here is we do need to make sure to set is aiming to true or false so that that way we can determine it later on. And then we also need to go ahead and use the get path function because actually passing it the node won't work. You have to pass it the node path. So let's go ahead and save that and hop back over into 3D. Now for the variables, all of the spread variables are already set up. We just need to set up the node references. So the IK solvers are self-explanatory. The camera node, we're actually gonna have to set up in the player body, but we'll leave that for now. We'll go over to the aiming IK container as well as the left and right idle IK containers. And then we have all of the targets. All right, so we're gonna save that, hop over to the player body and we'll set the camera from here to just the camera 3D. Later on, we're probably gonna actually make this camera 3D a child of another node 3D so that that way we can do camera shake without adjusting the aim of the gun. But for now, this will work just fine. We've already set up the different animation names so we can go ahead and save it and hit play and see how it looks. All right, so as you can see, the revolver is kind of aiming around randomly, but it is smoothly moving from one to the next. And if we aim down sights, it does again, but a little bit tighter. And then if we fire, you can also see that we go ahead and kick up. And if we keep firing, we'll keep kicking up. We can go ahead and reload. And because we're blending in between the interpolation for the IK solvers, we can just go ahead and move from canned animations of reloading and what have you over to IK very smoothly. And overall, I'm very pleased with the result.
Next time we're going to be working on making the hands not push through walls when you're up too close to a wall, as well as maybe making the flashlight react to the environment and maybe track enemies that are directly in front of the player and things like that. But for now, this will do it just fine. Thank you all for watching. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.